Over the last few months, we've had major processor announcements from Apple, from Qualcomm, and from MediaTek. And it's taken a while for all the phones to become available on the market, but now they are. So now we can test the latest processor from Apple, Qualcomm, and uh, MediaTek and see what is their peak performance, what is their peak GPU performance, and also what is the sustained performance. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. Okay then, let's get into this. So we're going to be looking at four devices using three different processes. I'll explain why four devices for three processes in a moment. The first one is the Apple iPhone 17 Pro. That's got the A19 Pro processor in it. So on the CPU side, that's a 2 plus 4 setup. So hexa-core with the top speed of those first two cores reaching 4.26 gigahertz. Next up, we have the OnePlus 15 that's got the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5. That's a, uh, an octa-core processor, 2 plus 6 setup, uh, 4.6 gigahertz for those uh, two cores there. So, of course, the A19 is on, based on the ARM 64-bit architecture, but designed by uh, Apple in-house. The uh, Snapdragon 8 Elite G5 is also an ARM 64-bit based processor, but designed by Qualcomm in-house. Next, we have the Oppo Find X9 Pro with a Dimensity 9500. This is also a 64-bit ARM processor, but it's using ARM-designed cores in a 1 plus 3 plus 4 setup with this one core reaching a maximum clock speed of 4.21 GHz. And then our final phone is the Realme GT8 Pro, which again has the same Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 as the OnePlus 15, and why I'm including that will become clear in a moment. Okay, so here are the Geekbench 6 single core scores. So we can see straight over the leader is still Apple with the uh, A19 Pro. Uh, so we've got 3,843. We then seeing next comes the two Snapdragon 8 Gen 5 processes at 3,634, 3,621, basically the same uh, number. And then slightly behind, but still over 3,000 by quite a long way, we've got the 3,219 in the Dimensity uh, 9,500 in the Oppo Find X9 Pro. But Apple's still the leader in terms of single core performance. And this, of course, is absolute performance. Uh, and each one has its clock speed as they've manufactured and so on. This is not relative performance to clock speed or anything like that. When it comes to multi-core, we see here that it is the Snapdragon that's in the lead. Over 10,000, 10,800, 10,800 in both cases there. Uh, next after that, we have the uh, Apple with 9,900. So just slightly behind there. And then 9,500, 9,600, we've got the Dimensity 9,500. Okay, so that's CPU. What about GPU? Well, we've got the six core GPU in the iPhone. That's the Apple GPU. Its heritage, of course, is the uh, Power VR chip from Imagination. But uh, that's kind of becomes Apple's now as they've been tweaking that over the last few years. In the OnePlus 15 and the Realme GT8 Pro, we've got the Adreno 840. So that's, again, a bespoke GPU from Qualcomm. Then the Oppo Find X9 Pro, we've got ARM's GPU. That's the G1 Ultra. So three different types of GPUs, just like we had three different types of CPUs. So here's the test for Wildlife Extreme. And the winner here by uh, quite a long way is the ARM GPU. So 7,820. Next comes the GPU in the Realme GT8 Pro, 7,466. Now, it's technically the same as the GPU in the OnePlus 15, but that seems to be scoring a lower number. And again, we're going to talk more about this uh, in a moment. And then the slowest of them in terms of GPU is the Apple GPU, 5,357. So quite a difference here in the GPU score. So the ARM GPU coming in top, then the Qualcomm GPU, and then the Apple GPU. And when you switch on a bit of ray tracing, because they all, of course, support hardware ray tracing nowadays. So when you switch on ray tracing, then you get, again, the uh, ARM GPU winning here, 15,340. Next up, you've got the uh, Snapdragon 8 Gen 5 with the Adreno 840, 13,000 from the Realme, 12,000 and something from the OnePlus 15, and then just under 12,000, uh, 11,920 from the Apple GPU. 
So I said I would talk about why I've got two devices with the same Snapdragon device. And that's basically because the OnePlus 15 can't complete these stress tests. After they get about three quarters of the way through, the tests are get killed off by the OS because the device is just running too hot. So the OnePlus 15 certainly seems to have a heat issue when it's running under stress and it gets killed off. So the OnePlus uh, 15 is not included here in these results. And that may also be why the GPU results are less for the OnePlus 15. But the Realme GT8 Pro seems to do an absolute sterling job. So what is this? This is a stress test over time. So here at the beginning, we can see everybody's at their best behavior, their best performance. And then that slowly starts to go down as the device heats up and it can't use such high clock speeds because the device is getting too warm. So the most steepest decline here we can see is from the Oppo Find X9 Pro with a density 9500, though it's matched pretty soon by the Realme GT8 Pro. So they come down quite quickly. The Apple also comes down quite quickly. However, the Apple seems to be fairly consistent. It's going down all the time. If you notice here, it's got, you know, look at this line here. It does go even below this line at the end here below 4000 however the other two do have their ups and downs uh, all over the place what can we basically say at the very end here from 15 runs onwards the snapdragon well even from 10 runs really there was a, a reprieve here in the middle but from basically 10 runs onwards the snapdragon drops down to the lowest speed of the three uh, the Apple, as I said, takes this slow decline down to under 4,000 points here. And the and the Oppo has a good go at kind of keeping itself uh, in the game. And eventually it's kind of got the same speed as the Apple. Or however, just depends on where you catch it in this curve. So that's an interesting set of results. So all of them, of course, all of them, all devices have thermal throttling. Uh, and you can take away from that what you want. But it looks like certainly the GT8 Pro here with the Snapdragon certainly goes down to the lowest performance after a long run of running the wildlife extreme stress test. And we can do the same with the ray tracing enabled. So the Solar Bay stress test, again, uh, all of them take a dip at the beginning. The Realme GT8 Pro seems to do better here. It doesn't take such a dip there at, at, in those first five runs. The other two devices look at this point here at five runs. We can see that the Oppo and the app iPhone are basically at the same performance. The Realme just slightly higher, but then the Realme takes a bit of a dive and it stays under the other two. Really, uh, a couple of times it kind of just reaches just a bit higher than the iPhone. But in the end, it stays lower than all three devices and the Dimensity 9500 uh, dips here once two runs it kind of dips below the iphone but then it recovers and stays uh, here so by the end of the three runs you've got the oppo with the dimensity 9500 doing the best then you've got the iphone and then you've got the snapdragon in the realme gt8 pro and there you have it. Now, obviously, there's much more to buying any particular device than just the peak performance and the sustained performance, you know, camera, battery life, connectivity and so on. But I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below about any of these particular processes. Do any of them particularly, uh, you know, attract your attention or oh, that that's really good? or I'm really looking forward to this being in more devices or whatever. Love to hear your thoughts. OK, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the channel. I'll catch you in the next one.